So, a lot of outrage uh, over, of course, the fact that um, the Scotland squad seemed to be free from self-isolation yep. despite one of their players testing positive for COVID. And uh, Barry on Twitter says, I work in a school. Last night, 14 staff, 14 staff received self-isolation texts from the government due to one parent visitor. We need to teach all 1,200 children in school today, but with so many staff out for the whole week, and every one of those staff is double jabbed. I think the disruption to education now, especially, yep. uh, is causing an ongoing problem, isn't it? And yep. with teachers double jabbed, you'd think that they might be given some sort of exemption from quarantine isolation. As Dr Hillary said, there's a little bit of confusion over that, but it is still the guidelines that you do have to isolate. Uh, of course, we're going to talk to Matt Hancock, the health secretary, about that because... Goodness me, we need to educate our children. Absolutely. So As Jane said, many people... Those got to mean something. And maybe, Jane on Twitter, maybe it's just the idea of one rule for one and one rule for the other is just so unhelpful. We'll, uh, we will speak to Matt Hancock about this about 8.30 this morning. Now, today marks 73 years since Empire Windrush arrived at Tilbury Docks, bringing the first of the what is now known as the Windrush generation, people from the Caribbean who had answered calls to help rebuild post-war Britain. Decades after living and working here, thousands were wrongly arrested, detained and sometimes even deported. While the government has agreed to pay compensation to victims, today Labour is calling for an independent body to oversee the scheme, which it says has significant failings. Well, Anthony Bryan came to the UK as a child. He was later arrested and we're going to speak to him in just a moment. First, though, here's a clip from the BAFTA winning drama inspired by his life and experience. Open the door right now. What is this? What's going on? Are you Anthony Bryan? Yes. What's this about? Anthony Bryan, I'm arresting you on suspicion of being an illegal what are resident. You talking we're about on illegal. behalf of the Home Office. This is Look, I don't know what's going on, but I'm in touch with the Home Office. I've yep. been going to beg it out. You can every... deal with that later. For now, you have to come with us. Utterly shocking experience for those people who had every right to be here. Just... Should not be threatened oh, with being detained. Yeah. Or, um, or sent or back deported. to countries they hadn't lived in since exactly. they were children. Anthony Bryan, whose story was portrayed in that TV drama Sitting in Limbo, joins us now, along with cultural historian and campaigner Patrick Vernon, plus Shadow Home Secretary Nick Thomas-Simmons. Uh, let me come to you first, um, Anthony. I mean... And so I think, you know, it's, we're so grateful of you being on the show this morning and talking this through, but the thing that occurs to me now that this has... This has now become your life. You know, the, you know, you came to this country and you like each and every one of us trying to get a life of your own. Your life has now become trying to defend your right to be here and now to be compensa and compensated for what, how you've been treated. And it must just be heartbreaking for you, for, the, for this now to be everything that you do. Yeah, it's, it is heartbreaking, but what can, what can you do? You have to wait for the Home Office to deal with everything, and it's, I think it's taking too long, myself, anyway. You, um, you're 64 years old, Anthony. You were unlawfully detained by the authorities twice. You were told you'd be deported back to Jamaica. Jamaica is the country of your birth, but you left in 1965 when you were just eight years old. Yeah. Um, as a result of everything that happened to you, you went on to lose your job, lose your income, and you relied on your family to survive financially. You have been offered compensation, but what is that compensation and why did you reject it? Because it simply wasn't enough, was it? No, I didn't think it needed to come everything in consideration. I didn't get my three years where they told me not to work. And just, uh, no, I just, I, I feel it was unfair, to be honest. I, I wanted it to take out the home officer and go independent. Somebody deal with it for independently. Um, Patrick Vernon, you led the campaign for an annual Windrush Day, which was then introduced in 2018, and you're behind the petition to fix the compensation scheme 
uh, for the victims. Mm. I mean, there are too many people, aren't there, who are affected by this, whose income uh, has been stopped, who have been offered compensation, which isn't good enough. But sadly, there are a large number of people who have died waiting. And you want to be, presumably, a voice for them in this. But for too many people, it's too late. Yeah, it's really sad, actually. I mean, it's an indictment on this government, still an indictment on the Home Office, that thousands of people have still not been compensated properly. The Home Office has got a massive backlog of cases from the time they launched the scheme in 2019. Only just recently, the National Audit Office, in a report, gave a damning verdict on the lack of the proper administration <coughs> and support for people like Anthony and many others. And also, a lot of people have not come forward. And the main reason why that is, because the Home Office were the perpetrators of, of the winner scandal in the first place. And it's the wrong organisation, the wrong part of government to manage and support people around who have been traumatised. I mean, people have been traumatised in the first place by the, by the hostile environment and they've been further re-traumatised because of this administrative process, which was not even paying them, not even paying for loss of future earnings or even pension rights, particularly for people who may not get a job again. Yeah. So it's something needs to be removed, and it's really sad that we're doing this on, you know, obviously it's part of National Windrush Day, but it's also about justice, but also about recognising the Windrush generation legacy. Pa Patrick, why do you think that the Home Office has been so inept? W what are the reasons behind it? Of their slowness to react, the despicable compensation offers that they've made, not just to Anthony, but to other members of the Windrush generation? What do you think are the real reasons behind it? Is it simple inefficiency, incompetence, or is there something else? I think it's that. I think, as I said before, the Home Office was not, not the right department to deal with the compensation scheme. They, they are under-resourced. They've deliberately not put enough resources in. They're not given proper legal assistance for people to make the necessary claims. And ultimately, I think the department is structurally racist uh, uh, and, it's not, and it's working against people. 21 people have died and not been able to claim the compensation. Now it's down to their families and states to do so. It's, a, it's an outrage. 21 people who have been waiting to get compensation have not been entitled to do so. Uh, it's just, so this it needs to be removed, and an independent body, but as well, what is also required is organisations such as the Department of Health, NHS England, to provide immediate, immediate term mental health support and counselling and also look at people's physical well-being because okay. what's quite clear, the hostile environment now causes death. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, you know, that's quite an indictment. Let's speak to the Shadow Home Secretary, Nick Thomas-Simmons. Um, it, it, it's a devastating criticism, but this is a, a generation of people who came to the UK uh, and, you know, contributed everything uh, and have been treated dreadfully by the government. Um, what are you calling on as the Labour Party? Would, do you back this call to set up an independent body to now deal with uh, those who haven't been adequately compensated? Nick Thomas Simmons. We absolutely do back that call, and I think it's absolutely essential that the government does hand this scheme over to an independent body as soon as possible. What we've seen since the scheme was set up back in 2019 is just 687 people receiving payments. The actual payments people have received have frankly been derisory. They don't go anywhere near compensating people for the trauma that they have experienced. And even worse, we know that at least 21 people have died when they've been waiting for their compensation payments. The Windrush compensation scheme has become an offensive mess. Frankly, you had traumatised victims who are being re-traumatised. The government has to act now and hand it over to a body that has the confidence of the victims to actually provide the justice that they deserve. Well, let's remember someone who can't be with us this morning, someone who we have spoken to um, actually on the programme um, before, but sadly, she is one of those 21 who, who has not received justice. This is Paulette Wilson. Paulette moved to Britain from Jamaica when she was 10 years old, back in 1968, to join her grandparents. She went to primary school, secondary school here, and worked as a chef for most of her life. 
and for part of that time, she worked as a chef in the House of Commons restaurant. She travelled to the UK legally. In 2016, she received a letter informing her she was an immigration offender and needed to take immediate steps to return to Jamaica, a country she hadn't visited in half a century. She was arrested twice and spent time in Yarlswood Immigration Removal Centre before being transferred to another centre in Heathrow in 2017, ahead of a flight to Kingston. And it was only a last minute intervention by her MP that prevented her deportation. Anthony, Paulette is no longer with us, but you describe her as your inspiration, don't you? I do, because I saw her on the news first and I decided to follow her lead and go to the paper as well. That's how I first met Paulie Williams. Paulie Williamson. Well, we, we're going to put a headstone on her thing today. Yes, a special you know, plaque is being uh, unveiled uh, for Paulette to... today, I know, and Patrick Vernon. Yes. You'll be there gonna... too. Yeah. Thank you yeah. both very so much we'll indeed. Do the lead up for. Thank you okay, thank for having you. us. And good luck um, to you, Anthony. Um, I hope you get justice for what has happened to you. And Patrick Vernon, um, thank, thank you, you very much indeed. God, it's, it's heartbreaking when you think about Paulette, you, Paulette Wilson spent all her life working so hard and in her last days, the concern on her, in her mind would have been, am I actually a British citizen? Am I going to be sent back? Am I going to get any compensation for the way I've been treated? And then she passes away. I mean, yeah. it's just... Uh, Paulette's decision horrendous. to speak to the Guardian newspaper about her arrest is, is what encouraged hundreds of others yeah. uh, to come forward. Um, and she was an inspiration. Absolutely. Uh, and should be, should be remembered as such. In a statement, the Home Office says <coughs> the Home Secretary overhauled the compensation scheme last year. These changes are working, it said. Nearly £30 million now paid or offered. They're continuing to work hard to ensure people receive everything they are entitled to as quickly as possible. <laughs>